I will always protect religious liberty. Always? Get rid of all these heebie-jobbies they wear at TSA. Well, I, I've seen I, we want it where the women over there don't have to wear the you-know-what. Describing women wear, wearing bugs of bank robbers. Will you apologize for that, well, Kay? As I said, I stand by what I wrote. And the latest sign of Islamophobia comes from the high chamber in France. The French Senate has voted to ban anyone under 18 from wearing the hijab in public. And you might have seen reactions to this online. Like from Ibtihaj Muhammad, world champion and the first American woman to compete in the Olympics in a hijab. This, this is incredible. Time magazine is calling her the new face for Team USA. In response to minors, including athletes, not able to wear the hijab, she wrote, quote, Never was I denied the opportunity to play sports because of my faith. Religious freedom is a human right. We've heard that before. Protecting the rights of all Americans, no matter what their faith is, no matter what their walk of life is. This is the time for us to stand up. This is the United States lead, and we need other countries to join this International Religious Freedom Alliance. The idea of being able to live out your faith is protected. But not necessarily that faith. Hello everybody, I'm Julia Sun and thanks for watching. Let's get the nomenclature right first, shall we? I don't want to call them the hibby jobby thing. A hijab is a square scarf that covers the head, the neck, but not the face. It's similar to the shayla, which is a longer scarf that's wrapped around the head and the neck. A burqa, and this is the one that makes a lot of people uncomfortable, covers the whole body and the face. The eyes are covered by a mesh screen. And there's the niqab, often confused with the burqa. It's a veil for the face that leaves the opening around the eyes free. These clothings once represented oppression over women. However, it doesn't mean non-Muslim lawmakers can just force people to get rid of them. That's a kind of oppression too. It propagates the Islamophobia that we don't need. We can't admit the problem, which is Islamism. The consequence, the fight's not engaged, it wages longer, more people die. I think Sharia law is a waste of time anyway, and it's a goof, and it was handed down by, in a bad book, but, but, but that, leaving that aside... Did you see that chuckle? But that, leaving that aside... Words like these divide us. Muslim individuals who truly believe in Sharia law, who truly believe in going after people that disagree with them to the point of killing them. Islam is the most intolerant <laughs> religion in the world. When it's a campaign to teach against Islamophobia, then they're all, they all voted unanimously. Yes, we'll do this, we'll support this, because that's the PC thing to do. But now parents are fighting back. They're saying, we're tired of this. And what I hear you saying is, we're not going to take a moment to reflect upon why this is happening with our, within our community, but instead, we're going to look at the larger community and blame them. That's Absolutely. what I see happening. I that, that's unfortunate. Why are people coming to this country in the name of Islam killing Americans? And don't you think you should pause for a minute and reflect on what's gone wrong within your community? Criticism of Islam's role on the world stage is certainly valid. The Muslim world needs to take a hard look at itself. Well, shouldn't this country take a hard look at ourselves more?